Robin, if, uh, would you, if you state your name and where you're from, and so we have it for the record. And as Senator Chambers rightly stated, all of this will be preserved for many, many years. So. Good morning. My name is Robin Merrill, and I'm the Legislative Counsel for Administrative Advocacy at the Human Rights Campaign in Washington, D.C. HRC is America's largest civil rights organization working to achieve lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender equality. By inspiring and engaging all Americans, HRC strives to end discrimination against LGBT citizens and realize a nation that achieves fundamental fairness and equality for all. On behalf of our one and a half million members and supporters nationwide, I am honored to submit the statement into the record of today's hearing addressing the impacts of the recent Supreme Court decision United States v. Windsor and the impact of federal, federal recognition on same-sex married couples living in Nebraska. This summer in the United States v. Windsor, the Supreme Court invalidated Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act or DOMA, which restricted the federal interpretation of marriage to only different sex marriages. Following this decision, the federal government now recognizes same-sex married couples and spouses for a number of federal purposes, including taxation, social security, and spousal benefits for federal workers and members of the military. In determining whether a couple is legally married, federal programs either look to the laws of the state where the couple lives or to the laws of the state where the couple married. This means that although Nebraska does not recognize same-sex marriage, legally married same-sex couples in Nebraska will be recognized by the federal government for many benefits. As a result, same-sex couples living in Nebraska will be forced to navigate conflicting recognition requirements on the federal and state level. For example, for federal tax purposes, the IRS now considers same-sex couples to be married if the couple married in a state where the relationship would be recognized. Although Nebraska law requires taxpayers to use their federal filing status to file their state income tax, the Nebraska Department of Revenue issued special guidance that same-sex married couples um, taxpayers will be required to file as individuals if, as if they were unmarried. This conflict places an additional burden on same-sex married couples who will not only now forfeit state marriage benefits, but will often pay additional costs in order to comply with complex state requirements. Same-sex couples living in Nebraska will also face harsher, the even harsher effects of Nebraska's non-recognition law when it comes to federal safety net programs like Social Security that look to the laws of the state where the couple lives to determine eligibility. Social Security currently provides critical benefits for families following the death or disability of a spouse. For many, this monthly payment is a lifeline and can provide spousal benefits of up to $20,000 a year. However, despite a lifetime of contribution to the system, surviving same-sex spouses living in Nebraska will be considered ineligible to receive benefits because they are not considered married by their home state. Despite federal recognition, this lack of state recognition places an already vulnerable population, especially those who are elderly, at a greater risk of poverty, isolation, poor health, poor health outcomes, and a reliance on public assistance. As a result of this confl conflicting state law, Nebraska's same-sex married couples will not only be forced to face a complex legal landscape, but will often be turned away from the critical federal benefits and resources that other same-sex couples have access to simply because where they live. Thank you so much. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions of Robert? Chair Chambers. Are you a lawyer, you said? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm not going to discuss in detail what the case, what the opinion of the court was, but at least one of the dissenters was of the opinion that with the move that the court took that day, it would just be a matter of time before across the board same-sex marriages are going to have to be recognized. And especially since the court bottomed its decision on liberty and equal protection of the law under the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, the very differences that you are mentioning, the disadvantages and disabilities that will fall on same-sex couples in certain states like Nebraska, do you envision the possibility of those issues being raised in a properly framed lawsuit that might result in the Supreme Court saying 
that no state can fail to recognize the validity of a same-sex marriage? I think that is very highly possible. I think looking at issues like Social Security especially, where the harm is so great and the disparity is um, felt so um, disparately based on just sheer geography, um, I think that I think it's inevitable that a lawsuit will will be brought at some point. I think that um, really the Supreme Court is sometimes an unpredictable body, so I think that it's a question of what that will be. But I, I think that um, we do believe that it is a matter of time. That's all I have. Thank you. Just one question, and I, I was in looking at the New Jersey uh, <coughs> track of cases that started in the lower court, Supreme Court. I didn't. Can you? Do you, are you familiar with the recent New Jersey decision? Can you just trace what happened there very briefly? It went, what did the Supreme Court say and what, what did they base their opinion, if you, if you would? Because it was a little different, I, I, I recall, than, than the decisions, for example, in the Iowa Supreme Court. And it, was, it, it took the case in a different way. And can, can you Sure, I'm not 100% I'm not, um, sure. I'm more of a federal attorney, but I'm happy to get you more information on um, state level work, but um, from what I understand, they did just rule that looking at a civil union versus a marriage, um, since the rights and benefits were, were had parity, um, that it was not constitutional to have two separate parallel standards. Did they, did, okay, and maybe someone else later can talk about it, but were, did they talk about two classes of did they use the word class, do you know? I'm not sure that New Jersey did. I know that um, the Supreme Court did refer to um, civil unions and domestic partnerships as, I think it's skim milk marriages. Um, so I think that that's definitely, um, definitely an understanding that even the highest courts are understanding um, that anything that is not marriage is a, is a um, subpar institution. <coughs> is, it a, is it a separate class that's being, the law is signaling out? Yes. Or? Yeah. Okay. And if anybody else coming later that has some more information on that, I, I'm interested in that whole idea. Uh, anyone else? Uh, uh, thank you, Robin. Thanks for coming out here, all the way out here. Thank you.